So hello to everyone and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for yet another episode of our AFC Wimbledon Road to Glory here on FIFA 18 career mode and today is a very special episode because we're starting yet another new season. For you guys that saw episodes 25 and 26 you'll know we did the entirety of season 3 in one episode. I'm glad to announce my own sanity, I'm not going to be doing that in today's video because that took 8 hours to record. But we are today going to be starting at season number four and embarking on our first season in the Premier League. Having won in the Championship by five points, as you can see, to Middlesbrough. We are promoted as champions and we'll be making our Premier League debut. Now, if you missed the last two episodes, I've sort of given away the plot a little bit. But if you want to check them out, there'll be links in the top right of the screen and to the playlist as well. If there's any other episodes or you're, this is, or you're completely new to the series, you guys can catch up on infinite amounts that you've missed so far in this series because it's been an absolute stonker of a series so far. If you're looking for a review of season three and some of the stats then again you can check out the last episode. We've already done all of that so you won't really be seeing any sort of recap. So as is always the case with the start of the season today you'll be seeing a lot of transfer activity, you'll be seeing pre-season and hopefully we can get actually the first game of our new Premier League lifestyle completed as well. So it should be a bumper packed episode for you all. As you can see, unsurprisingly the board are very happy with our accomplishments in season number three. So the start of the season has arrived. We've got our objectives and quite a few other emails as well. So first of all, Toby Civic has gone on loan to Shrewsbury. We've got two pre-contract agreement um, signings in the form of Jack Harrison, the Englishman from New York City, and also Michael Hector coming in from Hull City. Two very decent signings in my opinion and both 75 rated should both help us in our new Premier League campaign. Uh, Bersan Cellina has gone back to Man City and Axel Tuanzebi has gone back to United. So it's time to decide upon a pre-season tournament and as you can see the money that we're now competing for is slightly increased. I think the one on the left is probably the easier so we're going to go ahead with that one and obviously we can earn the most amount of money from that as well if we win it. Why? Why is this game so stupid? I don't, I don't understand. I I just, I don't get it. I don't, I know the wages are quite high. So maybe, uh, I mean, to be fair, if we change it, 7.6. That's just still not what you'd expect in a Premier League season. I don't know, you'd expect like 10. It just frustrates me because we got 7 million in prize money for our championship campaign, but we don't seem to get, we only seem to get half of it. Why? Why are we not earning or getting our entire, I don't get it. I would really love to bring in a, a bit of a bigger money signing for like 10 million pounds. We don't have the money, but in the top right of the screen, there will be a poll and you guys can decide whether I should get more money in terms of a budget or whether we should just stick it out with the BS that EA have given us because every single season we seem to get this prize money and then we don't actually get it. You can see the squad is relatively decent anyway. I mean, it's probably just about Premier League quality anywho, but obviously Walton in goal, 76 rated. Michael Hector's just come in on a free transfer from Holly, 76. Oshelarder at 75 and Dale Fry at 76 as well. If I'm honest, central midfield is probably our weakness now. Dozel 74, Smith 75. I know these two will grow, but we almost need a 77 or 78 rated player in the middle here. Uh, Harrison on the left hand side, Malambi in the middle as an attacking mid, and then De Silva Lopez on the right. Sorloth and Azoro as our strikers. Now in terms of training for the new season, we're gonna be keeping similar people involved for the first month, I would say. So for this first episode, these four players will be trained. I won't show you every single session, but I'll show you when they go up in terms of an overall. Hopefully we can have some of these guys getting really involved in a Premier League season and having proper breakthrough years. So as you can see, here is how the transfer list is looking. Ignore everyone down the bottom half. That's just because I've blocked transfer offers for them. The likes of Dozel, the Silva Lopez, I'm sure Azoro is down there as well. In terms of the actual transfer list, down at the bottom, we've got Alfie Egan and Turka Aino. Turka Aino is actually a youth academy player, but he hasn't seen any starting 11 action. He isn't going to, so he's up for sale. Uh, Alfie Egan is kind of the same. He's actually a original Wimbledon Youth Academy player, but I think we could we could sell him realistically, and we could get over 500k for him. And we just we don't even use him, so we might as well. Christian Walton is a very interesting one. He's definitely the biggest of the lot because whenever I use him, he's just so accident prone. Like he's got a good overall, and he's good to use in Sims, but. 
He can't, he literally could not catch a cold. His handling is so, so bad. Joe Piggott is for sale. Bit of a shame. I know he's a bit of a Wimbledon fan favourite in real life. Very instrumental in their most recent real life season, but he hasn't got the overall. He's not going to grow, and again, we could get a decent amount of money for him. 700, 800k could go a long way in this transfer window. And Liam Trotter, we obviously discussed at the end of last episode. He played his final game in the final game of the season last time out. His time has come. He's been a great servant for the side, but it's time for him to move on and actually get some starting 11 football, same as Joe Pigger. Now, obviously, I've already done a vote for you guys to get involved in when it comes to whether we should be getting more money for this season. You know, it'd be maybe three or four million pounds on top of what we have already. You guys can decide our fate on that one, whether we should just carry on with what we've got and it'll be a massive challenge, or whether we should go with the realistic option. And I will be giving you another vote at the end of the episode, I hope, in terms of a uh, player to sign. Uh, one player that we are going to go in for just straight off the bat though is this man here, Mason Mount of Vitesse, whose value is £8 million, but he has a release clause of 3.6. His wages are ridiculously low. I'm um, sorry, that is not an offer I am willing to pass up. We need an attacking mid slash centre mid, um, and I'm going to go ahead and do that myself. If you guys don't mind, I apologise if you do because I don't like necessarily making signings without you guys getting an input first of all, but there will be some input for you at the end of the episode, I hope. Plays for Chelsea in real life. I think he's only on loan at Vitesse because he's just gone on loan to Derby County in real life, but on the game, he is actually a Vitesse permanent player, and on the game, he's got a ridiculously low release clause. So we're gonna go ahead and activate that release clause, and now we're gonna delegate the negotiations. I'd love to go into those negotiations, but we don't have much money as it is given the way EA used their flipping prize money. I don't know what that system is. It's clearly horrendous, because it clearly doesn't reward you for how well you do the season before. But given we don't have that money, that much money to play with, and although I'd love to watch the negotiations, we're going to have to delegate them so that we can save some cash when it comes to bonuses and stuff. Now, he's only on 8.8k at the moment. He is going to want a pay rise, um, so I'm going to go for 12 and a half as the start wage. So there you have it. Mason Mount has decided he is going to be joining AFC Wimbledon. And that, that is very, very cool indeed. £3.8 million for a 75 rated, very decent potential player. He's, I think he's got a potential of like above 80 for sure. He's 21 years of age and he is an improvement on the side. Three year contract length is good as well because it's really difficult for some reason to negotiate relatively long contracts for younger players on this game. Important first team player, he will probably be that. And the man who plays for Chelsea in real life, but is at Vitesse Arnhem on this game, is going to be joining AFC Wimbledon. And he will be our first signing of this transfer window and of this season. He's someone that I looked at actually in the course of season number three, but I chose Malambi instead because Malambi was a higher rating. And now we've got the best of both worlds. We've got him and we've got Mason Mount now coming in too. And here he is. Here is the new boy, Mason Mount, having arrived from Vitesse Arnhem for 3.6 million I think I just said 3.8. He is our newest recruit, number 20 at the moment. That is not what he's going to be. Three star skill moves, a four star weak foot on him. Decent enough, well, very good agility and balance actually. 71 vision could be improved upon maybe in training. Good curve, passing attributes, ball control and dribbling. His long shots are also 78, so it might be worth testing him out from distance. We've got a, we've got an all right squad, ladies and gents. I'm not gonna lie. I think the only thing really we might need to do is bring in a winger, potentially, but then on top of that is replace Christian Walton and that's probably gonna be a lot. So it's now time to jump into pre-season and we've been drawn against Genk, Ghent and Levante. So two Belgian sides and a team from La Liga in our pre-season tournament group stage and hopefully we'll be getting out of it. I really want to do quite well and build up a decent amount of money from this pre-season tournament. We can actually get a four million pounds if we win it. Haven't got off to the greatest start though, nil-nil draw against Genk, although probably on paper they're the strongest side in the group. Game number two of pre-season now, bit of a disappointing nil-nil draw against Genk if I'm going to be honest with you, and now we face Levante. I said Genk were probably the most difficult side in the group, but Levante probably just as difficult. It's another draw, 2-2 two -two here. Now we've got a bid here for Joe Piggott, who is for sale, he's one of the guys that is for sale at the moment, and I really want to negotiate it with Charlton because he actually used to play for Charlton Athletic, so it would be nice for him to go back to his former club. 
Um, but it's a ridiculously low offer. His valuation is 600k, but our chief exec reckons we can only get 500 maximum. So we negotiated with Charlton, and they're happy to pay half a million pounds for Joe Piggott. It's still below his valuation, but they weren't going to go any higher than that. We sort of stagnated on the deal. So hopefully Joe Piggott's off on his way back to his former club, being Charlton Athletic. Joe, you've been, you've had your moments in this series. You scored a back heel goal, which I still. Probably will never get over. So the final game of our pre-season tournament in the group stages anyway comes at home now against Ghent. Now they've lost to both the sides that we've drawn against, so mathematically speaking, we should win this one. And if we do, we've got a very good chance of going through. Jack Harrison has given us the lead inside four minutes, but on a Yinka has equalised for Ghent. Malambi then scores once again in a sim game to give us the lead back. If you're wondering where Joel Rosoro has been throughout this entire preseason, he's actually on international duty at a major tournament with Sweden. Yeah, he's at the Euros basically, Euro 2020 with Sweden. Meanwhile, whilst I've been explaining that, Malambi scored again, De Silva Lopez and Sorloth have got, then got themselves on the score sheet and we've won 5-1. So I said I'd tell you if uh, there was any growth in training, Morgan Shaw and Jordan Davies both up to 69 and 68 respectively. Now though it is time for the semi-finals of the pre-season tournament and this is going to be our most difficult task. So we're against Osasuna, who have a 100% record in this tournament, including beating Celtic, and we have thankfully won on penalties. I saw the draw, and I was like, we literally never win on penalties in Sims. We have somehow done the impossible, and it's Mason Mount in just his second overall game. It's not his actual debut, because it's not competitive, but in his second game for the club, he has got his first goal for the club to cancel out a Ramirez goal for Osasuna, and we are into the final now of the pre-season tournament. There you can see we've got an extra 1.3 million pounds in terms of prize money. We've got 1.1 for getting out of the group stages. That's 2.4 million pounds overall earned from this pre-season tournament, and you can see it now means we're on 6.3 mil. This, though, is the one, and this could really change our season in terms of players that we are able to bring in in this transfer window, because we're up against Gang now in the final of a preseason tournament. Now we had them in the group and we drew nil-nil I believe in the first game of this entire tournament. However since then we brought in Mason Mount and Joel Azoro is back from his pre-season pre, his pre -season amblings over in a major tournament. So hopefully that will be enough firepower to see us win this time instead of getting the goalless draw like before. Pretty sure we've lost in the final in every single preseason tournament we've taken part in. Hopefully that voodoo does not c continue again. Well, it's a draw at the moment. It's not necessarily going to continue, but Samata has given Genk the lead. And Goyen, though, off the bench to add to a Kelvin Smith opener means we're 2-2 two, two now. We're going to get a winner. Is it going to go to penalties? <sighs> it goes to penalties and Genk win it 5-4. And the curse does continue. Now here is an interesting one. We've got a bid here for Dale Fry of six and a half million pounds from Burnley. Now, for a start, that is nowhere near enough. I'm sorry, I'd be wanting double figures in terms of millions if we're gonna be selling someone like Dale Fry. But it begs the question, should we start negotiating for every player we have just to keep ourselves on our toes a little bit more? Or should we just stick to selling the players we want to sell and rejecting bids for some of our starting 11 players? Because if we were to get something like 10 mil for Dale Fry, we might be able to bring in someone a little bit better in that position. Now this, this is what I'm talking about. Um, obviously, goodness gracious me. See, this is the thing, this is what I'm talking about when it comes to, you know, negotiating for every single player. Look at that, our CEO reckons we could get £36 million for Marnie Malambi. I mean, I don't want, I'm not going to sell him, I'm not going to sell him in this window because we've only just bought him, we haven't even had a chance to see how good he is properly yet. But if we were to get a bid for someone, say like Joel Azoro or something similar, should we negotiate it? Because that's a lot of money that could easily be reinvested into better players. So an update on transfers. Joe Pickett had rejected his move to his former club Charlton, but he's decided to go to Portsmouth for slightly less. Of course he has. So we get 300k for that. Unfortunately, Alfie Egan and Turka Aino don't want to leave at the moment, but hopefully we can squeeze another half mil, 600k out of them as well. So we've got a bid here for someone that I mentioned earlier, actually. Davide Felicioli from Standard Liège. Now, he's 72 rated, 21 years of age. <laughs> 
He's played well, honestly, he's played actually really well. I was actually very impressed with him because his physicals are really good. But he's down in the pecking order in terms of sentiments, especially now we've brought in Mason Mount. I'd still probably prefer Nzuzi Toko to him as well. We've got a bid of £3.8 million and we're going to delegate it. Bit of a risk, I realise, but we're going to start the offer at 5.1 or 5.25 million pounds and then don't go any lower than 4.1. Oi, hello, hello, standard Liege are going to slap 4.5 million pounds on the table for Davide Felicioli. It's a bit annoying, I wanted to give him a chance if I'm going to be honest, I didn't really want to sell him but he's probably one of the most expendable players we have in the side in terms of the amount of depth we have at centre mid and if he does leave we'll be getting at least three and a half million pounds allocated to us and that would mean we'd be on, well, we'd be above 10 mil. This is it though, enough of the transfer talk, it is time to get into our first game of the Premier League season. This is the side that's gonna be facing them. We are away at St. Mary's Stadium to play Southampton, our first ever Premier League game. It's Christian Walton, still surviving at the club for now in goal. Hector, Oshelaja and Dale Fry at the back. Kelvin Smith, Mason Mount, De Silva Lopez, Malambi and Jack Harrison in midfield with John Lazoro and Alex Sorloth. Anyway, here you can see Southampton AFC Wimbledon. It's so nice just to see it in those graphics. Deji Oshalaja leads out AFC Wimbledon onto a Premier League pitch for the first time in his career. This is what I wanted. This is literally the vision I had at the start of the series with Deji Oshalaja. He's the captain and he's actually made it to the Premier League and he's still a starting 11 player. This is brilliant. Uh, the debut for most of these guys in the Premier League, Malambi, De Silva Lopez, uh, obviously came from League One, played with us in the Championship. Sorloth is making his Premier League debut. So is Jack Harrison, I believe. Oshalaja is obviously, well, he's the obvious one. Walton as well. So many players are making their Premier League debuts here. Dale Fry is another one. Oh, this is so good. This is so, so good. I'm actually loving it. Let's go. Let's get off to a good start as well. Malambi Azoro, that's through now here to Jack Harrison on his Premier League debut. And after four minutes, we have taken the lead in the Premier League. It didn't take any time at all. And on a counter-attack, Jack Harrison has given us the lead against Southampton in his first proper actual game he has scored four minutes into his debut the man we signed for free from the, the where was it new york city over in the mls there he is the beautiful face scanned magician of a winger has got himself on the score sheet oh, what a start what a start to premier league life we are we are here to stay boys i'm not gonna lie my goodness me what a start what an actual start to life in the Premier League. That's absolutely unbelievable. As if we took the lead within four minutes. Jan Buffal looking to cause danger for Southampton. Hector gets that one clear with good use of his noggin. Harrison Reed, Tadic, that's Mack. Now into Sam Gallagher. The defence splits like the Red Sea. And Southampton equalised. Got myself in a massive pickle there, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I didn't even know who I was controlling, but Southampton have scored and we're back to square one. Very good start to proceedings in terms of entertainment, but after 11 minutes, it is 1-1. Osha Larger goes walkabouts, that's completely my fault. That's fully my fault, man. I haven't played this game in a while. Christian Walton was not up to the task of saving. To be honest with you, he probably could have done. And this is a story with Christian Walton, man. This is Kelvin Smith, though, into Alexander Sorloff on the turn. What a save from Jerome Zoot in the Southampton goal. That's what we need people like Christian Walton to be doing. He isn't doing it, and that's why he probably won't last longer than this transfer window. Mount, De Silva Lopez, back into Mount again. What a run! And I wanted to take the shot, but it didn't let me for some reason. Mount, though, has still won a penalty with some good dribbling. I pressed RB and, I, and B for a finesse shot after a great one too between Mount and De Silva Lopez. Mount just didn't do it, but thankfully, he was absolutely hacked to the ground. Now, Mount won it. I want to give it to him. But has he got decent penalties? He's actually got all right penalty stats. Yeah, bunny. All right, we'll give it to Mason Mount then. Let's go there, but high. Mason Mount going to take it. And it's saved by Zoot again. 
Oh, that was a great opportunity to take the lead. Unfortunately, it is wasted. The Silva Lopez there into Alex Sorloth with the strike, and it is just over the bar of Lato. This is Marnie Malambi, and now Kelvin Smith bursting forward. Azoro, Harrison, back into Azoro again, back into Jack Harrison. This is great passing play. The Silva Lopez is overlapping and on rushing. It's Leonardo de Silva Lopez, and that is 2 1. Great goal again. Leonardo de Silva Lopez restores our lead. And Jack Harrison's only gone and got himself a goal and an assist in his first game. De Silva Lopez, we worked on his finishing. He's not quite as inconsistent anymore. And thankfully, he does find the bottom corner in traditional De Silva Lopez fashion. How many times have we seen him score a goal like that? From the right hand side, blasting it across the goalkeeper's body, and we are back in front. De Silva Lopez gets his first ever Premier League goal for AFC Wimbledon, having scored many in the divisions below. And we're leading in the big time as well. This is a great start to our life in the Prem. We obviously need to work on our our game defensively, I think it's fair to say, but going forward, we seem just as dangerous as we did in the championship. We foul there with the ball roll. Oh, he's gone past Osha Larger there as well. It's back into Bufal again. And it's 2-2. Two, two. What a game this is, fam. We've not even had half an hour with about four goals. Sofian Bufal with an easy ball roll to get past Dale Fry. The pass took Osha Larger out of the game. And then it was 2v1. And unfortunately, Southampton, uh, well, I said we need to work on a defensive play. But it's for sure. Like, we really, really, really do. Anyway, here's Joel Azoro trying to put a ball into the box towards the Silva Lopez. And he almost... Found the back of the net from the most unlikely of circumstances being an aerial duel. Great ball in from Azoro, and to be honest, from that position, De Silva Lopez should have scored. I just wouldn't have expected him to get on the end of it. This could be very dangerous because they've got Dusan Tadic and Sofian Bufal from 22 yards. It's going to be Dusan Tadic on his left foot. It's over the wall. It's off the post. Cleared away by Mason Mount. Crucially, for a Southampton attacker could put it in. And that was very, very close to us being behind for the first time in our Premier League lives so far. But but instead of that, we're going on a counter-attack with Jack Harrison. Malambi's bursting down the left channel. It's Malambi he goes for the shot first time. Well, not first time, but early. And it's a tame one in the end. Southampton have now hit the post. We've missed the penalty. And there's been all sorts of other chances as well. This is unreal. If every single Premier League game is going to be like this, we're in for a treat, ladies and gents, honestly. Sam Gallagher there's lost out to the Man Mountain, Kelvin Smith, and we can set up another counter-attack here. Harrison, Azora, that's now through to Alexander Sorloff. And he should have scored. Too much power on it over the bar, and we should be leading 3-2 at half-time for sure. Maybe under pressure from the defender, maybe that's what did it, but we need to be more clinical in the Premier League, ladies and gents. We can't be passing up opportunities like this all the time. Oh, that's Jack Harrison with a really good interception. This is Sorloth trying to play it through towards Malambi, and he almost got on the end of it. Got a feeling it's only a matter of time at this point, the way the game is going. The momentum is definitely with us, but Southampton are always dangerous. We win the ball back again there. Malambi, this is Alexander Sorloth trying to play it through again. De Silva Lopez, he's done well to get past his man. It's De Silva Lopez. Jerome Zut does really well to come out and punch. Still Joel Azora is going to try and cut back all the way back into the Silva Lopez that's through to Alexander Sorloff and it's 3-2 is it it is indeed the Norwegian is not offside and Alexander Sorloff has restored our lead it's been coming and that is relief more than anything on the turn Sorloff finds the bottom corner that has been the writing has been on the wall since the start of this half we've been dominant at least it was equal in the first half the Silva Lopez into Sorloff on the turn. The Southampton defender sliding across cannot quite get there. And Jerome Zouk can't either. We just need to hold on to the lead. We need to hold on to the lead. I'm going to make some changes as well. Lamina back down the line for Mack here on the right hand side. He's cut past Hector far too easily. It's cut back to Tadic. Good block there by Smith. Now into Gallagher. Blocked by De Silva Lopez. What a save by Walton. Oh my words. Panic stations. Three different opportunities for Southampton. Heroic defending and then heroic goalkeeping. We didn't deserve to concede there because of the, the absolute limbs flying across. Hector gets the ball clear. Good interception there from Dale Fry. Really good stuff from him. And he can launch the ball. He can't launch the ball forward. He instead tries to find Toby Brown. We'll play it back into Hector and then get the ball back from the Jamaican 
Toby Brown, that's a great ball over the top for Andre Dozel, who can try and cut back, find his man at the back post. It's De Silva Lopez, and that is 4-2. Game, set, and match. And it's an acrobatic goal to end proceedings. We have won on our Premier League debut. Toby Brown chipping it up to Dozel. The chest control and the acrobatic finish into the top corner from Leonardo da Silva Lopez is going to be enough for us to take victory in a six goal thriller in the Premier League. 4-2 will be the final result, uh, I think, you don't know, even know with as far as this game has been concerned. How on earth am I going to condense this into less than five minutes? Goodness gracious, this is Toljani sent Toby Brown for chips. Lamina, still Lamina into Henderson, Jordan Henderson, Gallagher on the turn, he's got one back for Southampton, we're into injury time and it becomes a seven goal thriller. I think though, it's going to be too little too late, we just basically need to hold on to the ball for the rest of injury time and that is it, 4-3 is the final result in our first Premier League game. What a football match that was, the best game of this series hands down. With the amount of good performers there were in that game, it's easy to forget some of the heroes. De Silva Lopez gets your man of the match because he scored twice, but worth noting Jack Harrison got the goal scoring up and running inside just four minutes and got the assist for De Silva Lopez's first. Azoro and Sorloth also getting goals. Did Azoro get a goal? No, he didn't. Sorloth got a goal. Azoro got an assist, so hence they both got 9.3 ratings. Kelvin Smith with an 8.7. Hector with an 8.4 on his debut. All the debutants, Harrison, Mount, and Hector, all seeming pretty solid. Now, this is where you guys come in, because as I've been mentioning a couple of times during this episode, we need a new goalkeeper. Christian Walton, I know, pulls off a very good save in that game against Southampton but it's probably the first good save I've seen him make for probably two seasons now in terms of in this game so we probably need to replace him I'm not gonna lie to you so we're probably gonna be selling him next time we need to wait as to whether we'll get more money for Davide Felicioli and as to whether you guys think I should get more money generally speaking the transfer budget in that poll but I'm still gonna be giving you guys the chance to vote on a goalkeeper which hopefully we'll be able to sign regardless of most of those factors so we've got four that we can choose from now the first of which is the man you can see on the screen here, Francis Uzoho. Unfortunately, none of these guys have been scouted because my GTN scouts are literally just absolutely horrendous and take longer than a month to scout literally anybody, whether they're in, whether they're even doing anything or not. So I don't ask me how, but uh, so we've got their valuations apart from, well, we've got two of their valuations. The other two I'll just have to fill you in about, but Francis Ozoho, potential of about 82. He's quite young, so theoretically he shouldn't be anywhere near that, but his valuation is considerably higher than Christian Walton. So you would think He's probably around about that sort of overall, or maybe a little bit lower. We could always train him to be of a good enough overall, as long as he plays better than Walton, that's the main thing. Angus Gunn is another option. Uh, Man City backup, again, 82 potential. Worth slightly less than Uzoho, the Nigerian goalkeeper, but probably of a slightly higher overall at this point in the save, given he's a little bit older. The other two options are maybe slightly more out there ones. Andre Morera from Atletico Madrid is 24 years of age. Again, similar potential, around about 82. And again, he's 24, so you'd expect him to be at least late to mid 70s, so around about where Christian Walton is. Unfortunately, we don't have a valuation for him either, but I assume he's around about the same valuation. And then finally, Alfred Gomez here, the Senegalese goalkeeper from Torino, who starts the game, I think about 74 overall, and has a potential of 82. Given he's 26, we damn know he's going to be of the overall to be better than Walton. He's probably actually 80 already, to be fair. But obviously, if we sell Felicioli and we're using Walton as part of this deal, we could, probably, we could probably afford to get him. It all sort of depends. So in the top right of the screen, there will be a vote. It does depend on a couple of different parameters, especially as far as Alfred Gomez is concerned. The other three, we could probably buy whatever the circumstance. But who do you think we should go for? Gomez is the best, but obviously the most expensive and the other three are pretty much equal. Anyway, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. In the background, you'll be seeing the Hall of Fame, which is where all the accolades are kept for this series, including top goal scorer, most assists, youngest player, and all 
of those good stats as well. That though is going to be it for today's episode of the Wimbledon Road to Glory here on FIFA 18 and what an episode it has been. A new signing in the form of Mason Mount on the verge potentially of bringing in a new shot stopper and game of the series so far probably 4-3 against Southampton. Who even knows what I'm going to name this episode because there's pretty much everything you could choose under the sun including the fact that it's the start of a new season if you enjoyed that video which surely you must have done slap a like on the video subscribe if you're new to the channel and of course you can follow me on social media these days too my twitter handle and insta are exactly the same it is at the official fng and links are down below but it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today have a great day enjoy yourselves and goodbye I've been smoking and drinking yeah. Say the weed and the voice got me thinking Skeptical Boy, I better know when I'm under the influence If I say shit, then I meant it all Had a flashback when I used to kick ball When a coach told me I went technical Man, I lost all the air in my lungs And it's like man took a low blow to the testicles Now you see the spare time, I invest it all To the music, dug deep, now I'm seeing improvements Spill force on the ink on the page And it feels therapeutic, yeah